So, summer as a transmasculine person is not a fun time for two main reasons. The first one being, if you are binding and wearing a binder during the summer, you are asking for death. It's the truth. The other reason is, is usually in the winter and autumn and whatever, we can just pack on as many layers as possible in attempts to hide the hips. But in summer, um, can't do that or else you'll pass out of heat stroke, most likely. So summer as a trans guy can be pretty tricky. But lucky for you, I've spent three summers out and about as a trans. I'm coming up on my fourth, so like, I, I know what I'm doing. I've been to this rodeo. I'm the fucking head cowboy. Are there cowboys at rodeos? I think so. I don't know. I've never been to a rodeo. Okay, that was a bad analogy. I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for many years. So I have decided to make this video to help out you, the young trans masculine person watching this. Or maybe you're not young. Maybe you just don't know what you're doing. And that's okay. I'm here to help. So we're going to be talking about everything under the sun when it comes to surviving the summer as a trans guy, trans, non-binary, masculine person, AFAB, yes, you know why you're here. So if you only want to see a specific part of this video, you, as you can see below on the like scroll time bar thing, I have separated it into sections so you can just skip to the part that you need to see. And if you're cis watching this, skip to the fashion show at the end because you don't need any of the information, but I'm pretty proud of my little fashion show that I put together. So you can skip to that. So I don't want to waste any time because we have a lot of information to go through. But anyway, here is the summer survival guide for the trans men and trans boys and masculine non-binary folk. All right, now the first problem is binding. Wearing a binder during the summer is probably one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever experienced. It's so bad because basically, as you know, a binder is very tight very restrictive and it's an added layer of clothing so even if you're only wearing a t-shirt you're always wearing two layers at all time which is not a fun thing when it's like 90 degrees outside obviously binders even when it's not hot outside can make you sweat because they're just so tight and everything's so tight in there so it's it's a slippery slope so here's how I recommend binding during the summer. Wear your stretched out binders. Now, if you like have just come out and you don't have any stretched out binders yet because you just haven't been binding for that long, sucks to be you. But if you're like me, I have been binding for like four years now. So I have some binders that are pretty well worn, pretty stretched out. No, they don't bind as great, but they are a lot more comfortable. So right now I'm wearing one of my newer binders and already I'm starting to sweat just by like sitting here in it with my light on me. I'm not even in the sun. So maybe try and avoid wearing your new binders as much as possible and opt out for your older ones. Now, the other problem I usually have in summer and pertains to binders is binder straps showing with t-shirts. Obviously when you're wearing like a hoodie, a denim jacket, a flannel, like it goes pretty far into your neck so you really don't see binder straps. But as you can see, it's even like showing just a little bit right there. And that bugs me. So my main solution for this is I wear a lot of black t-shirts. So I just wear a black binder. And when you're wearing a black binder under a black t-shirt, you can't really see it. So that's a pretty easy fix if you're like me and wear a lot of black. I know I'm wearing white now, but that's just because I wanted to switch it up because I'm going to be wearing a lot of black in a second when I'm modeling clothes for you. You know, a black binder under a black shirt, it can blend in pretty well. Now, GC2B came out with this racerback binder. I don't remember how long ago. Ignore the like hair dye and stuff I have on mine, but this actually doesn't work. So if I were to wear it, these binder straps actually come in like further along the neck than the normal one does. So this actually solves no problems because the binder straps actually tend to show more in this for me. Plus this is just infinitely more uncomfortable because it feels more like a bra. Cause as you can see, it's built like a more of a sports bra. So I guess if you're not out, you could order like one of these and pass it off as a sports bra. So that's good. But the thing is these straps tend to show more. They're more uncomfortable. I will say it is like more airy because there's less fabric so this is a good summer option if you already have it but if you're buying it like I did specifically because you wanted the thinner straps to not show the straps still show they're just more uncomfortable but it is less fabric 
so it can be worn as like a cooler option. I'm not completely dissing the Racerback, it does have its purposes, but in terms of like it being like the sleek hidden binder, it's not that. So what I would recommend for getting your binder straps to not show like inward is to actually just cut it like I did. So you don't wanna cut the white part because that's the actual binding bit, but you can like just cut along the straps here like I have and then the straps don't show as much. So that's what I did. As you can see, this is a pretty well-worn stretched out binder. The like, color has started to fade. I've worn it so much. And I'm pretty sure this was like literally my first ever binder, which is why I felt comfortable like absolutely cutting it up. But yeah, wearing a cut up binder to like avoid the strap showing is my best option for you. Again, some people are perfectly fine with their binder showing and that's cool. But if you're like me and you're just like, I don't want a binder show, do this. What did I just say? Now, the alternative to binding in the summer is trans tape. My review of trans tape is this doesn't work for me. Um, I don't know if it's like my chest elasticity or whatever, but I bought what I thought was my correct size. And I'm pretty sure it is my correct size. Just I have tried this multiple times. As you can see, I've used quite a bit of the strips, but I have never gotten this to work for me. If trans tape is something that works for you, great, but like this was a real expensive purchase for something that doesn't work. I get, I don't think it works just because like my chest is like a little built different than other people's. Like when I see other people's chests when they're applying this as like a tutorial, like their nipples are pointing like downward. Mine don't point downward, they point out. So I guess if your chest is perkier, this really doesn't work well with it at all. You kind of need more sag factor for this to work I guess but I mean the good thing about this is is if it does work for you you can swim in it you can sleep in it like it's super breathable because it's like just it's not like super restricting on you it's just tape but apparently this isn't the best thing for your skin it like comes with some skincare stuff but like I've heard from people who have been using it for a while that like even if you're using other skincare stuff this just isn't the best thing to be doing to your skin so I would, I wouldn't recommend this for like everyday wear, but if it does work for you and you're going to be doing like a lot of activity, maybe do it. I don't know. I don't recommend this because it didn't work for me. And I was like not informed that your chest had to be a certain way in order for it to work. But yeah, trans tape is an option. The next thing is clean your binders. Like you have to be cleaning them like twice as often as you were before because they get so sweaty and so gross. You can actually, I have found, you can actually pretty safely machine wash JC2B binders. Just don't put them in the dryer. But like I have machine washed all of my binders and just let them air dry and they've all been fine. So if you have a GC2B binder, uh, it, I am, even though they don't recommend machine washing it, you can probably machine wash it. Like I literally just throw it in with all my other clothes, like it's fine. So when you are washing your binders, if you only have one, what I would recommend doing is putting it in at night, letting it wash, and then right before you go to bed, get it out so it can air dry. And then by the time you wake up the next day, it'll be dry and ready for you to wear again because binders do dry pretty quickly. And obviously if you have multiple, just wash them like you do the rest of your clothes. But yeah, just remember to wash your binders. It's, it's a good thing to do. Now we are on to swimming. There are two types of swimming. There is just like go into the water park with your family to like have fun swimming. And there's like competitive Olympic, this is cardio. You are going to be sore the next day swimming. The first type of swimming it is perfectly safe to wear your GC2B binder. You can get your GC2B binder wet, you can wear it to the beach, wear it to the water park, wear it to the fucking like community center pool to play Marco Polo with your friends. Like it's fine to wear your GC2B binder and get it submerged in water, get it wet, wear it while you're swimming. It's completely okay. If you're doing like cardio level swimming, don't wear a binder. There are these swim binders and the word swim binder is like a literal oxymoron because they can't compute because either you're not actually swimming swimming, you're just getting wet and in that case you can wear your normal binder or you're actively swimming so you're doing exercise so you can't wear a binder. So a swim binder, either it's a normal binder that is just saying you can get this wet and then it's not meant for like actual swimming or it is meant for actual swimming but then it can't actually bind because it's meant to allow you to do exercise. So don't waste your money on those fucking swim binders. Just get a GC2B binder and if you're doing like actual like <laughs> swimming, just wear a sports bra. Like just like it's ah. Uh. Like if you're swimming as exercise, 
you, you don't wear a binder during any other form of exercise. How come? Because this exercise is happening in the water. It's suddenly perfectly fine to exercise in your binder. So yeah, don't get the fucking swim binders. It's either they're not real binders because they're allowing you to swim or they are real binders and they won't allow you to swim safely. Because like swimming, you would think that swimming out of all of the exercises is the worst one to wear a binder in because you're holding your breath. You hold your breath and then you have to catch your breath. Don't wear a binder if you're doing like actual swimming. But if you're just like going to the beach, Go into the pool to chill. Like, it is perfectly safe to wear your JC2B binder. Anyway, now that I have that rant out of the way, once you're done swimming in your JC2B binder, it will be soaked, but again, do not put it in the dryer. That's just not a smart idea. Just let it air dry, you'll be fine. Put on a dry one if you have a dry one. If you don't, like, what I did is I, like, draped a towel over me, like, very conveniently over my chest, and that kind of worked while I was waiting for my binder to dry. So, in terms of swimwear, literally just get a swim shirt and swim trunks, and that's all you need. Obviously, right now in this clip, I don't actually own a swim shirt, so I'm just wearing a normal shirt. But it's not that complicated. People act like being trans mask and getting a swimsuit is, like, rocket science. It's really not. You just wear a swim shirt, wear some swim shorts, and you're good to go. And that's all you really need. Now, here is my recommendation for when you are in the water. Don't be wearing a packer. Do you know how many like horror stories I've heard of people who were wearing their packer while like in the ocean and they just saw their dick float up to the surface? I've only heard one horror story of that, but that's enough to get me to like not ever want to try it. All right, sorry, I ran out of storage, had to go delete some footage. Um, also, I think they just started doing construction outside, so sorry if you can hear that. But anyway, I just wouldn't recommend packing while swimming. I, I, it's not smart, don't do it. Like, I get it, you were dysphoric, but like, I think it's worth not having your dick fall out while you're in the water. Just not be wearing it. Okay, if you have like one of those like harnesses that like straps it to you, then like, yeah, you're probably fine, but like, don't like if you have like the like little joey pouch or like anything that isn't the harness don't don't it'll fall out it will it might not it probably won't but it could now here's my thing recommendation so swim trunks are meant to be worn by cis men with no underwear so like they're just meant to go like dicks in no underwear into the swim trunks as someone without a penis i find it incredibly uncomfortable to be in shorts with no underwear on. I'm not a fan. I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. So I would maybe recommend just wearing your underwear with your swim trunks. I know it's not normal and you're gonna have wet underwear. Yeah, I just, I personally, I am very uncomfortable when I'm not wearing any and I'm just like in these shorts and I'm like, what the fuck is happening? So I would just wear underwear. If you even want to go like the extra mile, you can get like a bikini bottom or a Speedo, like actual like swim material type underwear to wear under your swim trunks. That's cool. But like, I just, I, I just always wear my underwear anyway. I don't care. I'll be uncomfortable with like wet underwear. I, I, it's, it's much better for me. Okay. So that's, that's my thing. If you've never like swam in swim trunks before, it's, uh, it, wear your underwear. It's, it's, do it. But anyway, on to hygiene. Hygiene is very important in the summer, especially if you're on testosterone, but I'm not on testosterone, so I'm not here to give you advice, but you probably smell worse than I do, so. What I would recommend hygiene-wise is to shave your armpits. You don't have to shave them all the way. As you can see, I've left some like little stubble, so, but I would not recommend letting them grow out fully. I would just trim them down because again, your armpits get really sweaty, especially because of the binder. So having less hair there is just more comfortable. Again, you can still leave some so that it's a little bit masculine, still like not like totally like clean shaven, but I would just recommend trimming your armpit hair, keeping it a little bit shorter, like stubbly. I, that's what I would recommend. But you don't really need to shave anywhere else really, unless you want to, but like, yeah. The other thing, obviously, is men's deodorant, not only because, like, man, manly, masculine, but also you are going to be sweating a lot more because of your binder, and men's deodorant is just stronger in general, so if you don't have men's deodorant already, now is the time to get it. Another thing I would recommend that maybe you're, like, gonna be really uncomfortable when I say it, but put deodorant on your chest, because, like, there are cis women with, like, 
very large tits that like put deodorant just when they're putting on a bra so like it might be a smart idea to put deodorant on your chest like if you're really uncomfortable you can get the spray kind and just spray your chest before you put your binder on but i would recommend it because it gets really sweaty and like it can smell so i would think just a nice way to like prevent that help that i've started doing it and it has worked for me so just spray some deodorant on your chest or just use like a stick type but put deodorant on your chest just start putting on your chest and if your like back is really sweaty too maybe and put it on your back but like i would recommend armpits and chest that's what i think you should be putting your deodorant on so we've talked about binding and swimming and hygiene but the bulk of this video is about clothing the thing is with clothing a lot of times in these like tips for trans guys videos usually people push one type of clothing because that's masculine this looks masculine so it'll make you look masculine but that's not always true like for me some masculine clothes make me very uncomfortable and some feminine clothes i'm like yes give me that so anyway, when I'm talking about like masculine clothing, it's really up to you and what makes you feel good and your own gender and what you are comfortable wearing. So if I say something, I'm like, I like wearing this clothes because it makes me feel masculine, but it doesn't make you feel masculine. It makes you feel bad about yourself. Then don't wear it. I'm just giving you my ideas, especially in terms to like hiding your hips, but also everyone's body is different. Like I've heard people say like jogger sweatpants help them hide their hips, but like for me, it makes mine worse. So when I say this will hide your hips, it might not hide your hips because everyone's bodies are different. Everyone's like preferences are different. And also like clothing, everyone's choice of clothing is different. So I just wanted to say that wear what you feel comfortable wearing, but here are my like general ideas and like going over all the different types of clothes you can wear to like help you be more comfortable in the summer as well as like maybe feel good in the summer. The main goal of clothing in the summer is to mostly just reduce body heat because of the binder. So that's what the angle I'm going at this with is I'm just like, okay, we need to hide our hips, but also we need to not die of heat stroke. So if we can like combine the two, great, but sometimes you have to pick one or the other. Anyway, now that that disclaimer is out of the way, let's go to shorts. Shorts, I think, are the most pivotal part of your summer because you need to always be wearing them. You will- no pants, no! Already, you're going to be having two layers at least of clothing on your top half at all times. So, maybe let's minimize everything that we're wearing on the bottom half to kind of like expel the body heat. I don't know how temperature works, but I think it's a better idea to like always stick to shorts and try and like maximize coolness on our lower half since we know we're not quite getting it on the upper half. Starting off with what I call casual shorts. These are your standard like sweat shorts, pajama shorts even, like just the normal cloth fabric shorts. These are basically sweatpants, but they're cut off before the knee. I think these are great shorts because they're very comfortable. They can be a little more hot than like other types of shorts that we'll be going over. So like these aren't for necessarily all weathers. I would highly recommend these if you're like doing any travel or road trips. These are a great just lounging shorts. And these are just like a nice staple short to have in your arsenal of shorts. I'm gonna be saying the word shorts a lot in this, aren't I? Next up are my personal favorite shorts, and those are gym shorts. The great thing about gym shorts is they come in all different lengths and colors. I know here I'm only showing black and blue, but those are the only gym shorts I own, but you can get gym shorts in any color, like any length from like short shorts to like below the knee. Gym shorts are very versatile. Again, so many different styles and colors for you to choose from, so they can go with whatever aesthetic that you present. Gym shorts are obviously meant for exercise and sports so in terms of keeping you cool during the summer they do an excellent job very airy very cool very nice to wear some people gym shorts really accentuate their hips but i think this kind of neutralizes out with how masculine gym shorts really are gym shorts i find are very masculine but sometimes they do end up showing just a little too much hip but on the whole, I think gym shorts are an absolute staple that you absolutely need to be wearing during the summer. Next up are board shorts. Now, Ty Turner made a video many of years ago saying that the best way to hide your hips was to wear non-elastic board shorts. 
And while this will hide your hips, oh my god is it uncomfortable. Wearing board shorts without elastic in it is a, the most uncomfortable thing I've ever worn. These shorts that you're seeing me wear right now, these used to be my swim trunks, but I don't wear them as swim trunks anymore because they're just so uncomfortable to move in. Like, yeah, they squeeze my hips a lot, but like at what cost? So board shorts are a good option, I guess, but I'm not a huge fan of them. Next up are jorts. Jorts, I love. Now the jorts you're seeing me wearing, I cut myself and I will admit I probably could have gotten a little longer with them. I did go a bit short, but with jorts, you could either buy pre-jorted jorts or jort them yourself by just cutting up a pair of jeans. I like the cut look because you get the little frays at the bottom. If you're someone who doesn't want those frays, you might, you probably need to cut them a little longer than you actually want them so that you can like fold them up and maybe hem them. But I think jorts are a cool option. They definitely say a lot about you as a person. So uh, jorts are great. Next up are what I like to call nice shorts. And I don't actually own any of these shorts. These are like the chinos, the khakis, the like corduroy shorts. These are like jorts, but in other fonts. And I don't own any of these because I think they look kind of stupid. But if you don't think they look stupid and you like wearing them, go ahead and wear them. They're great. A good option, but I'm not just a personal fan. Next up are cargo shorts. Cargo shorts are a glass cannon of shorts. Because yes, while they are the most disgustingly, violently masculine thing ever invented on planet Earth, they be showing hips. That's my problem with cargo shorts. It's like... Yes, wearing them will send a message like I am not a woman, but also they can also send the same message of I am a butch woman, look at my giant hips going everywhere. So, you know, cargo shorts, you definitely have to pair them with the right combination of things to make sure that they hide your hips, which we'll be going over later. You know, and if you do find cargo shorts that hide your hips, great, good for you. I have not, but cargo shorts are a very, very masculine look, although they are pretty ugly, so. And then next are one of my favorites, and that is booty shorts or short shorts. Now, are these the most masculine? No. However, they give you a free excuse to not be wearing any pants. And again, when you're wearing two layers on the top, not wearing any pants is a lifesaver. These are um like women's like booty shorts that I'm modeling here, but you can get like men's short shorts. Like short shorts are made for men too. And these shorts are great because they keep you so cool because like you're basically just not wearing any pants. Like I have boxer shorts that go down farther along my thigh than these shorts. So like, it's literally like I'm not wearing any pants. So if you're not someone who's like super set on being hyper masculine all the time, I would give short shorts, booty shorts a try. So in terms of shoes, I would try and wear sandals as much as you possibly can. Obviously these are Crocs and like, I love Crocs, Crocs are great, but any type of sandal will work. Cause like, you know, your feet can get really sweaty and hot when you're wearing like normal sneakers and whatever. So not having that is a great way to, again, cool yourself down as much as you can when you're already having to wear two layers. And obviously not all situations are sandal appropriate. I get that. So just try and wear really thin socks whenever you're in normal shoes. But I mean, I would highly recommend wearing some like Crocs or like, you know, those like Jesus sandals or like any, any just type of like aerated comfortable shoe that isn't like a normal like tennis shoe or whatever. I, I would recommend that. Actually, the summer of 2019, I wore my Crocs like literally every day that to the point where I had to then go back to school and put on my normal shoes. Like my feet felt tight and restricted because I was just so used to wearing Crocs all the time. So like sandals, wear those sandals. So now we're on to shirts. So I'm just gonna be modeling all of these shirts with just some gym shorts as I consider those as a staple. But again, these different like shirts and tops will look different depending on what shorts you're pairing them with. But I'm just saying I'm gonna be wearing gym shorts for all of these. First, we have loose fitting t-shirts. Loose fitting t-shirts are great because again, they don't really hug your hips. So they kind of hide that in a way. And I think they're kind of a masculine look, you know? It, again, if you're wearing a looser binder during the summer, these are great because again, they're a lot bigger. I would recommend just going one size up. So I normally wear like a men's medium and all of these are a men's large. So you don't need to go too overboard with it. Just like try and wear some like bigger shirts during the summer. 
The next thing is button-ups. And if you're a transmasculine person, I don't need to tell you to go get button-ups. You probably own at least one. Button-up shirts are great, especially the like more like flowy fabric kinds. You know, not like the like canvassy ones, you know the kind. The ones with the good swoosh factor. The ones I'm modeling are mostly made of the same material that the gym shorts are sort of made of, and these are just fantastic. I know a lot of trans guys have those like dad Hawaiian shirts, those are great. But button-ups are a wonderful option to keep you cool during the summer. Now, the next one is tank tops. And tank tops can be pretty tricky for trans guys because, again, a lot of the times your binder straps are wider than the tank top straps. So you can either try and find muscle tanks or you can just cut the sleeves off of your own t-shirts. So doing this isn't rocket science. You literally just cut along the hemline. And as you can see, you get some like cool looking tank tops. So my recommendation for doing this is pick a t-shirt that you don't wear super often. That way, if you fuck it up, then you're not like sad that you have lost a shirt that you loved. But yeah, just cut the sleeves off of your shirts. As you can see, I even cut the sleeves off of like some of my hoodies. And yeah, this is a great DIY tank top option because it doesn't require you getting any new clothes. You're just removing clothes off of your existing clothes. And this is a great way to find tank tops that will hide your binders because you're making them yourself. Now, I fully understand there will be days where you're too dysphoric to wear anything else but a hoodie. I understand. So I'm not going to say never wear a hoodie. Let's wear hoodies with caution. The first rule of wearing a hoodie during the summer is don't wear a shirt underneath. Usually in the winter, I like to wear like a t-shirt and then a hoodie. Don't do that. Just wear your hoodie with your binder on underneath. The second rule I would say of hoodies in summer is to wear lighter colored hoodies. So do not go outside in a black hoodie. You are asking for death. Like, as you can see, get some like lighter colored hoodies, maybe some like not super oversized hoodies, but you can wear some hoodies. And another option, if you really want to wear a hoodie, but it's like super hot out, is to get one of those like t-shirt hoodies. Um, these aren't like fully hoodie hoodies, but these do a pretty good job as they still have like the hood and the pocket and the loose fit. So you don't have to entirely like never wear a hoodie, just try and not wear like a black hoodie. And now my final like top shirt option would be like a baseball shirt or like any type of sports jersey. Cause like sports jerseys, the thing about them is they're meant for activity and exercise. So they're like pretty, pretty well like good at keeping you cool. As you can see, I only have this like baseball shirt, but there are so many kinds. Baseball shirts are great because they're like button up. So they're also like the same form of button ups. And they're also really masculine, so like these will make you look masculine. So I would personally recommend a baseball jersey because that's the only type I have, but I assume all types of jerseys will deliver a similar effect. Now, layering in the summer can be accomplished, but I would try and reserve using layers for days where you know you're gonna be more indoors or it's like maybe only gonna be in like the 80s rather than the 90s try and keep layering to like a minimum like if you're like gonna be like outside all day in 95 degree heat don't opt for a layer option but if like you know you're gonna be spending more time indoors today it's it's pretty okay to like maybe opt for one of these layering options so layering is really helpful for hiding your hips and also just for looking a little bit more stylish than just like a shirt and shorts so my first option for layering is a t-shirt over a long sleeve t-shirt this isn't the like coolest option. Again, I would really only opt for this if you're going to be spending the majority of the day indoors, but this is a cool option. It gives like a nice skater look and I frequently wear this look during like autumn and stuff. So I guess wearing it with shorts and some sandals, you might be successful in the summer with it. Next is the classic button up over a shirt. Everyone has worn a button up over a shirt. You literally just leave the button up unbuttoned and you have a shirt underneath. The button up helps hide your hips and the shirt helps make you not nude. This is obviously a very classic layering look, so you don't even need me to tell you about this, but I just wanted to like let you know. Next up is sleeveless hoodies over shirts. You can either do this with like your normal sleeveless hoodie or one of those zip up sleeveless hoodies so it's like a vest situation happening. These are really good because you then have pockets. And again, it's like a nice layer to add over your shirt to maybe help hide your hips. Also pretty stylish. I think it's pretty stylish. 
Another layering option is flannels, but I would, I would approach flannels with caution. So flannels, if you're gonna wear them in the summer, please roll the sleeves up at least and like, you know, try and limit them. Again, flannels are pretty insulated for the most part, so I would only wear these if you know you're gonna be indoors a lot. And then the final option is vests. I don't own any vests, I don't wear a lot of vests, but I guess if you're someone who's like a vest person, you can wear vests, or I guess, but I don't own any, so that's up to you. Next up is accessories, and these are super fun. Just because it's summer doesn't mean we can't still be fashion, you know? Adding some accessories can add a little bit of spice to an outfit, make you feel less like a boring cis person and be like, yes. I'm not a boring cis man, I am superior. Our first option for accessories is baseball hats and snapbacks. These obviously are great. They keep the sun out of your face. They're, you know, they have all sorts of different designs on them. You can wear them frontwards or backwards. I know I just dissed on backwards hats in a previous video, but I'm, I'm starting to come around. And you know, baseball hats, they're like, pretty masculine i think although there are kind of more unisex nowadays but you know i think they're a great option as a fun hat accessory and now beanies i would approach beanies with caution same as hoodies so like a beanie like this this is like a well insulated beanie that is like meant for winter this is meant to keep your head warm this is a thick beanie i wouldn't necessarily go for this type of beanie in the summer weather I would maybe go for one of these beanies. This is a really thin, thin beanie. It's actually a 21 Pilots beanie, but I painted over the logo. I would opt for a thinner beanie. You know, this is more for fashion, not necessarily warmth. So if you do wanna wear a beanie, I would opt for one of the like thinner, cheaper beanies. Now, an accessory I think more trans guys need to utilize are giant chunky watches. Look at how masculine this wrist is compared to this one. And this one just has a watch on it. This watch, it's a Five Nights at Freddy's watch. Don't hate me. But I feel like a big chunky watch, it's just a lovely source of like gender euphoria for me at least. And you know, it's it's fashion, it's fun. This will like instantly mail up any look that you wear. I would highly recommend you get just like a chunky watch. Next up, we have necklaces, and I love necklaces. I never leave the house without a necklace on. There are so many different types of like masculine necklaces to wear. Like when I first came out, it was not common at all for guys to wear necklaces, but like now it's like super common after the whole e-boy thing for guys to wear necklaces. So like it's the necklace revolution, everyone. So necklaces, there's all different kinds. They're obviously chains. Chains are great. They're a lovely masculine look. There's all different types of chains. You can get things on chains. You can ju just get plain chains. You can wear multiple chains and look like an e-boy. Chains are just a lovely, lovely accessory. There's also those like cord necklaces with like pendant things on them. Those are also a great look. And dog tags. I think dog tags are a really masculine look. I actually have some real dog tags that my granddad gave me. Um, but dog tags are also a super masculine necklace. So yeah, just get creative with your necklaces and wear some necklaces. Necklaces are fun. Next up is bags. And you're gonna be like, Theo, why do I need a bag? Well, you might wanna like carry water with you cause you know, your binder makes you hot and sweaty all the time. Or you might wanna carry like deodorant with you cause your binder makes you hot and sweaty all the time. Or you might just wanna carry like snacks, band-aids, I don't know, be the dad friend of the group and just carry a bag. So you can get like one of these bags. This is a Game Boy Advance carrier bag, but just like any type of like, like messenger, not messenger bags, but just like cross body bags. These are great. I like these. And then backpacks, you don't need to carry a full backpack. This is actually a boys backpack from like the Target boys section, I think. So this acts more of a mini backpack on me. Obviously this would be a full backpack on a child, but it has dinosaurs on it and I think it's really cool. But yeah, just carrying a backpack. I think also backpacks are a pretty masculine look. I mean, I know backpacks are unisex, but for me, I'm like, man, backpack. The final accessory I'm gonna recommend to you is sunglasses. Sunglasses are like literally the universal sign of a cool person. So why would you not wear sunglasses? Like there's so many different like shapes and colors and styles of sunglasses and like 
Also, it like protects your eyes from the sun or something. So there's really sunglasses for all different types of people. So, you know, and it's just a fun addition to any summer look. It's very summer, very fun. So now that I've shown you all of the different types of clothing and accessories that you can wear, I am going to put these into practice for you and give you some outfit examples. So enjoy my little trans guy summer fashion show of different looks that you can wear utilizing all the different things that I have showed to you in this video. Here we have the simple but effective. All it is is just a t-shirt with some shorts and crocs and you're good to go. A very casual everyday summer look that I think pretty much anyone can pull off. Here we have the skater boy and while he is wearing a beanie with layers, he has those lovely checkered shorts to make sure he's still staying cool in the summer. Don't forget the vans as well. Here we have the bisexual incorporating all aspects of bisexual fashion into a lovely summer ensemble. We have of course a tucked in shirt, some jorts, and of course a fun patterned button up. This look is not gay, not straight, just very violently bi. Here we have the homophobic uncle, and this is your one conservative relative who you know will absolutely instigate a political debate. He absolutely sucks, we hate him, but oh boy, does he wear masculine clothing. This look screams, I unironically use 4chan and thoroughly enjoy it there. This look I like to call hot out, quads out, and for wearing this look, it is important to never skip leg day. This is the look to show off all of your legs all of the time to absolutely everyone who sees you for literally no reason at all other than you own a pair of short shorts and you want to wear them. Next up, we have the guy who thinks TikTok is still called Musical.ly. He is eternally trapped in 2015, both mentally and physically somehow. And steer clear of this guy because he is just bizarre, strange, and will probably be a creep. Here we have the summertime emo, and this is what happens when you're just too emo to fully commit to actually preventing yourself from getting heat stroke, and you decide to put on a full-blown hoodie anyway. You're not okay. And here we have the guns time emo. He is absolutely pumped that it is summer and he is an excuse to not wear any sleeves at any point in time. Look at those sick muscles, those sick guns. He might not have any because he spends too much of his time listening to My Chemical Romance, but oh boy does he think he has them. When he says he'll fight you over your favorite album, he will literally fight you. Here we have Comfy and Cozy, just a simple casual little outfit I would recommend for, you know, maybe long car rides, plane rides, anything that you know you'll just be lounging around but still want to be a little bit summery. And here we have the gamer who went outside. Now, this is a very rare occurrence, so let's savor what little footage of it we have. Yes, his mom forced him outside, and no, he is not enjoying it one bit. Although he still has his 3DS with him, so I guess there's light at the end of the outside tunnel. This outfit I like to call swooshy because of all of the good swoosh factor you get from the button up and the gym shorts. This is a lovely casual summer look that I think anyone can wear and pull off. And it's just super fun, super chill, super casual, and very, very swooshy. Here we have someone's dad and dad fashion is all in how you act. Dads are mostly confused and lost all of the time. No one knows why this is, but they always seem confused and lost, so you really gotta do that to sell the look. Also be sure to shade your eyes with your hands even though you're wearing a hat. It is a staple of trans mask culture to just dress like someone's father, so I wanted to include it.